All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to the book of Revelation. We are actually going to be in Revelation chapter 11, verses 7 through 10 today. And, uh, you know, I, I do encourage you, have your Bible nearby I encourage you to continue to keep your Bible in your car with you, bring it with you when you go to work. Uh, even when you go to, you know, I don't know if, you have, if you're exercising right now, but maybe you go on a walk. You know, those are great times to talk to the Lord and talk through the scriptures, right? One of the best ways to pray is to actually pray the Bible. You know, I've been in prayer meetings and because I know my Bible, because I know what God's word equals God's will, just so you know that. So if you want to know what the will of God is, it is the word of God. God's already told us, right, what he wants us to do. He gives us the framework for how things look. You know, if you're wondering, should I love that person or should I really lay into him? Well, God's word always already tells us. The book of Romans says, oh, no one anything but to love them. So we already know. So when we choose to navigate outside of that, it's not the will of God. It's just not. Even if you say, yeah, but... The Holy Spirit told me, no, he didn't. That's why John the Apostle in his letter in 1 John says, test the spirits to know whether they be of God. Now we're in Revelation. God's given us a divine outline. I know there's a, you may be listening to these and, and you know, maybe you read a lot of blogs or you Google things and whatever that might be. And there's all these different interpretations to the book of Revelation. But the truth of the matter is the book of Revelation comes with a divine outline. God didn't leave it up to confusion, the book of Revelation. He gave us an outline. It's Revelation 119, the things that you have seen. That's chapter one, the risen Christ. Chapter two and three, right, is the church age. It's the seven letters to the seven churches. We're in the church age. And then the things which will take place after this. It's the Greek word, Metatauta. If you were reading the book of Revelation in Greek, it wouldn't be that complicated for you because you'd see Metatauta in Revelation 119, and then the chapter 4, verse 1, you would see Metatauta after these things, and then you would see John the Apostle, my beloved, being called up to heaven, and that's a picture of the rapture of the church. Chapter 4 and 5, these are the things that happen after these things. The Bible's not that complicated. It really, truly isn't. But we do have to take time. We have to hunger and thirst after righteousness, right? We have to desire the word of God as much as we desire breakfast in the morning or lunch in the afternoon or dinner at night, as much as we desire a, a cup of cold water when we've been out working on the yard in the sun sweating. We need to ask God to give us a desire for his word, to learn his word, to not think I'm a Bible scholar. No, if that's your mindset, you probably don't study the Bible very much because the more you learn the word, the more you realize I have so much to learn, but you'll know the scriptures and it'll be evident uh, in your life. And we're learning the book of Revelation. If you're taking the time and sitting down and taking this in, you're learning it. You're gonna know this book. You're gonna know about the divine outline. You're gonna know how Revelation breaks down. You're gonna know the progression of things and there's always gonna be hope in the future. Always, you will always have an absolute assurance of coming good because you'll know my Jesus is coming and he's in complete control. And we see this now, we pick it up, Revelation 11 with these two witnesses. It says, when they finish their testimony, so these two witnesses are testifying of the glory of God, that, that these things aren't happening because aliens took God's people or, uh, you know, all these other explanations. It was global warming. It was, you know, environmental changes. No, these two witnesses are going to be proclaiming, this is God Almighty judging humanity. You need to respond to him. You need to stop dialoguing and discussing whether or not God is real, and you need to humble yourself before him and realize you're a sinner in need of a savior. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. So it'll almost look like these two witnesses have been defeated. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you feel like I've almost been defeated. Maybe you're struggling. You know, maybe the Holy Spirit led you to listen to this today, but you've been, you've been on the fringes for quite some time. Listen, God will keep you. The work God began in you, he will be faithful to complete it, right? John the Apostle says in his letter, 1 John, he says, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. 
And these two witnesses, it'll look like they're overcome. It'll look like they're killed, verse 8. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city. That's Jerusalem, the great city, which is spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Verse 9. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days. How are we going to do that? It's through these cell phones. Right now you're watching this devotion through your internet on Wednesday and Friday and Sunday. We have our live stream where we have this opportunity to gather together at the same time and seek the Lord. I can't encourage you enough to gather in such a way like that because God pours out his spirit. Even if we're not together physically, we're together spiritually. And God pours out his spirit in a unique way at that time. Listen, that same live stream technology will be then and there will be CNN will have their camera right on those two witnesses and their dead bodies lying in the street, the Antichrist letting the whole world see what happens when you oppose him, watching their dead bodies lie there for three days. All the earth will see their dead bodies there three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into the graves, verse nine. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them. There'll be a rejoicing. They won't have to hear the gospel message anymore. They won't have to hear about God and what God, how powerful God is. They won't have to be faced with the reality that man is frail and really isn't in control. The illusion will be removed. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry and send gifts to one another. It'd be like Christmas. They're going to be so happy. We finally did it. Human willpower overcame God, right? Human ingenuity made it. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis where they built the Tower of Babel, trying to create a tower so high that they could reach God in their own strength, by their own abilities. We're still doing it today. But you can't reach God in your own strength. Jesus Christ, God's son, came down to the earth and died for us. And that's how we're saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jacob had the dream with the ladder in it, right? Jesus is that ladder. Jesus is the door to the sheepfold. We enter in through Jesus Christ. But these people will make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. How did they torment them? They didn't try to hurt them. They didn't try to aggravate their lives. It's like in the church world today with Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, good trees are bearing good fruit. They're just focused on what they're supposed to do. Their kids are growing. They're loving one another. They have real relationships with people. And then you have the outside forces that are trying to just aggravate it. Because why? Because the truth goes out and it torments those who are living, who are living in sin. It torments those who are rebelling against God because they're trying to deceive and they're being deceived. They're, they're pretending like everything's all right as long as I'm living apart from God and doing it my way and they begin to create God in their own image. But the truth of the matter is the two witnesses never tormented the people. What the two witnesses did was they shared the truth. They testified honestly to the glory, to the omnipotence, to the reality of who God is. And I encourage you today, listen, you want to be real, be real with God. Realize who he is and humble yourself before him. Don't shake your fist at him or tell him what he's doing wrong, but come to him as he is and say, Lord, forgive me. So let's do that this morning. Father, right now we do come to you and we recognize we are sinners. We are broken. We are incomplete, but God, you are whole and you are put together. And you are all fair, Lord, and you are powerful and you are in control. Even today, whatever we face, Lord, whatever comes our way, Lord, we trust you. You are in control and we thank you for that. And we pray it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.